Uh, I think that looks pretty nasty. So Today we're going to take the um, Z1S that I hunted with last year. We're going to give it um, some stronger limbs. Uh, we got those. Those are in a, a gray color, which I think is going to look pretty cool. We'll do some before and after photos. I'll probably insert that here. Okay, here's my bow from last year. Currently got 50 pound limbs on it with 53 pounds of about actual pulling force um, with it torqued all the way down. I'm currently using a three pin spot hog. I've got a ham ski rest on there. I've got the tight spot quiver, which sits really nicely against the bow. If you look back from this angle here, it's a little bit wider than my hand between the bow and the quiver. Currently, it's all in the bourbon color, using bee stinger stabilizers, Hoyt back mount, and another bee stinger stabilizer there. And then um, I use this, I use this little black thing, which stays on there all year. Just lets me use these stands when I'm practicing. I take those off when I'm hunting. That's the before. Let's get it uh, upgraded and give you the after. So like I said, we're gonna do some limbs. Um, we're also going to change out the strings since we have the limbs and the cams taken apart to be able to do the, the more powerful limbs. Since I'm doing that, it'll be obviously a new D-loop. I'll have to retie in my peep sight. And um, I figure since I'm changing those, uh, I'll leave the rest alone. Um, I'll leave the stabilizers alone. And I'll leave the sight alone for this year. This three pin sight has been absolutely phenomenal um, on the hunting trips I've been on. So I'm gonna leave that all the same, just changing the limbs, strings, and the quiver this year to see how that goes. I'm gonna try the Hoyt, um, I guess it's called the Super or Carbon Super Light Quick Detach Quiver. I'm gonna give that a shot this year. I'm going with the gray on that as well. Um, the reason I'm going up in poundage, uh, I can shoot this really comfortably and um, the first hunt of this year for me is a moose. Let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do to get the limbs off is we got to take the old strings off. So what I'm going to do is take a bunch of pictures of how everything is right now so that when I put it back together it goes in the same spot. I'm going to also measure peep to um, center D loop and that might just give me a good starting place when I go back to put it back together um, later on. It's pretty easy, right at five and a half. Um, next up, take some pictures, grab my phone, I'll take this off just so it's out of the way. Let's see, I'll do it as a video actually. So now we have a good video of that. We just wanna make sure it's the same way when we go back on. Um, so once we get this all apart, I'm also gonna take off the string for the ham ski so it doesn't torque anything. Um, and I have to retime it. And um, likely I'm gonna to have to move it, but we're gonna start with it where it was and hopefully uh, we get a little bit lucky. Same with the cam shims. We're going to shim them in the same way that they are now. We're not going to change that. We're just going to swap the limbs. Um, and if we need to change it when we get into tuning, we'll do so. Uh, I know I said it before we, I was going to do a tuning video. I ran out of time on my target bow and just um, got it done so that I could shoot. For this, because we have quite a bit of time before my moose hunt, I'm actually going to shoot a tuning video for you. So that, for me, will be... Um, I'll shoot it through paper first, and if I like that, then what I'll do is I'll start bare shaft tuning 
out to 20, maybe 25 yards, depending on wind and if um, if it'll go that far. Last year, this one I was able to do out to 30 with a bear shaft and it was pretty close. Um, and from there, my broadhead tune was great, but we'll double check that uh, out to whatever the max we can get on this is, just to make sure that everything's flying as good as possible. Uh, I guess I'll have to get that when I get them off. So what I'm gonna do is cut from here. You guys watched me do the limbs on um, my target bow this year. So I'm gonna do that and then come back it was a little painful, as always, but we got the uh, the new limbs in there. Now let's compress the bow back. Make sure everything is in there how it needs to be. So we're getting the um, cables in for the. Here we go. New with the new string. So we got that one, and we're um, referring to our um, pictures that we have. This down here. in front of this. Go over and around here. I think the uh, bourbon with the gray looks pretty cool. I think it's pretty it's unique at least which is always good but um, I think when we put the quiver on there and it matches those limbs, it's going to look even better. Um, but first I got to get this on here because it's fighting me. There it goes. String on. might have to compress this just a little bit more based on the way that these look here. Yeah, I'm going to need a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to let the uh, lens out, make sure everything sets. Let me see, the string is falling out right there. Make sure everything sets in its place as I loosen it. Strings on. Uh, I'll probably keep this just because it makes finding the middle easier on a all black string. So I'm gonna pull and rotate that all the way to the top, and I'll just keep that in there. Um, maybe cut off just a little bit so it's not so so much, but uh, that looks good. Next, we're gonna tie. I'm gonna put these in after I clean them. Um, next up, we're going to tie a new D-loop, and we're just going to use it where it's at right now. So we're going to run um, run our T-square straight down onto the rest where it is now. This year, I'm going to run a halo knot for all my hunting arrows. Um, so I'm actually going to put that on here. Get it set to zero and then I'm going to tie knocking points above and below. So as you can see I already have a D loop on here with my knock sets but uh, I was going back to edit the video and realized that the um, part where I had done the, the knock sets didn't record. Um, not sure how I did that but I figured I'd come back and just kind of quickly show you how to do that um, so you can still see how to do that since I showed you how I do the D loop and how I do the peep. So um, assuming that this is the right position for it, here's my knock. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of um, some of this uh, serving material 
I'm going to burn off a small section of it and I'm going to um, tie these in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is I like to do the bottom first. And I'm going to tie an overhand knot, snug it up to the knot, get that nice and tight, followed by an underhand knot the opposite direction. Another overhand. And just make sure it's nice and tight. One more underhand. Oops. More underhand, and then I'm going to tie a square knot on top. So that's one and um, another. So now I got that how I want it. What I would do if I was going to leave it permanently is I would burn the ends off of this down to there. Um, what I'm going to do is burn it close, but not too close because I'm going to take it off. Um, so I can move that out of the way, burn those, and I would just burn them all the way down. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is put the knock back in its place. It's touching here, so where I'm going to start the knock set on the top is I actually want to add space between one or two of the servings. So what I'm going to do to get it started, I'm going to do the same thing, one overhand. Kind of get it close, one overhand and one underhand. Now that I've got that, it should still be movable, and I'm going to move it to where I have one or two servings space. And what that does is, as the string compresses and makes a, a V or a triangle, it allows that knot to not pinch in there. Um, so I'm going to now tighten that pretty good now that I have this small space right here, which you can see. And then I'm going to do another overhand. One more underhand. And then double overhand to make my square knot. And the whole time I just want to be making sure I'm making it really tight. So that it stays. I can remove the knock. And same thing, take these and burn those down. I would do the same thing if I was going to keep these, but I'm going to take these off um, since I already had done it here. But just to show you how I've been doing it, I do the same top and bottom and I leave a, a one or two servings on the top one. All right, now I got the um, knock sets done. I'm going to put the D loop on. I just have two, mil two millimeter um, BCY, um, put that on, and then I'll put the peep in, and then we're done for tonight. Um, the rest of this weekend, we're going to tune and get this thing shooting groups out to 60, 70, maybe 80 if we can clear it. I'm going to start with about five inches, which is about right there. I always fray one end. Go ahead and burn it. And then kind of make it flat. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fluff the other side now just to get it started. But I think I have too much material, so I will likely end up reducing that material. By quite a bit. All right. 
right? So I'm left with a little bit more material than I think I want. Let's get that nice and tight to both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just a little bit off, tap it down, and then I'm going to burn it right there. Some people who are uh, much better at this than me already know what length they need it to be. Um, and I haven't gotten good enough to where I'm consistently checking my D loop length. And I should, probably should get there at some point where I use the same length. And the benefit to doing that is you can pre-burn the ends. Right, take this off. Kind of get it hand tight where I want it. And then I'm gonna take the D-loop pliers. Get those in here. Then really crank down on it. All right, you got a D-loop. Okay, it might be super annoying to hear because the floodgates just opened and it's pouring right now, but we got our D-loop tied um, and off camera I shortened it just a little bit just because I, I thought it was a little bit too long. Um, that's the one benefit to not burning both ends unless you just know specifically how long you want it to be. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unravel this just a little bit. Um, to where I need my D or my uh, peep site to go. Uh, we're going to reinstall our peep site and we're only going to temporarily tie it in. Um, so I'm going to um, break away and show that right now. Um, I used this to separate the string and kind of walked it down to roughly that five and a half um, inches where it was on my previous bow or on this bow really, but with the previous string. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the tension out and see how it rotates. So really that right there is pretty close. My D loop is rotated, which I can fix just by rotating it on the string. That's actually pretty close to where, to where I want it. Now I'm just gonna measure this distance. And it looks like I'm a little long. I need to come down maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. So we're just gonna slide it down. Now it kind of rotated that way, but I think Take the rest of the slack out and just make sure, see how it's wanting to rotate. Let's see. Right, so that's the next closest rotation. I might have to move it from there. That's more like four and a half. So the idea is rotate it upside down. All right, Let's see here. That's just about five and a half. It's rotated the correct direction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie that in how it is. Now, I'm not planning on um, leaving it in this exact spot. I'm gonna do some shooting and figure out where it needs to be. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did for my knock sets. I'm gonna do an overhand knot. I'm gonna do an underhand knot the opposite direction, right across just the center. And this is just to hold it in place. Um, I'll still be able to slide it up and down. Um, and then once I get it how I want it, then I will go back and tie it in permanently. But for now, this will just get us in there. Then once I'm happy with having you know a couple across top and bottom, 
I'm gonna go ahead and do an overhand double square double knot or basically a square knot on the top. And then same thing, I'm gonna burn that down just to hold it in place. All right, so that's just to keep it from coming out. And now we have our peep tied in. Okay, we got our peep, our D loop in. Uh, we're leaving the, the rest, we're leaving the site, leaving the stabilizers, but we do need to go ahead and add the brackets for the carbon super light um, quiver. Here's the quiver um, not put together. It comes with four different pieces. You have the screw knob, you have this bracket, which goes into the bow, then you have this little screw that is a keeper. So what that does is prevents it from sliding too far up and down in there. And then these individual holes are for setting the distance that you want this keeper to screw into. So what I did is put this all together, got it kind of set up how I want it against the bow. And now it's gonna go into the, I'm gonna zoom in here. It's gonna go into this side, which has a hex so that it fits nicely in there. And then on this side, you're just gonna run the bolt that comes with the kit right through into this slot. And you'll need an Allen wrench to do so. Get that tightened all the way down. And now that's snug in there. That's really tight. That's pretty snug in there. It's not wanting to move much. Okay, although not really a bow build, um, we got the 60 pound limbs put on and um, we put a new quiver on this year. Uh, we'll get a quick um, close up of how this all looks uh, finished and put together. Um, I think the bourbon and the gray look pretty sweet together. It's unique, something I haven't really seen. Um, anyone else do I don't know it gives the bow a new look so um, like I said heavier limbs I'm gonna have to back them out and work my way up uh, right now I can shoot about 54 pounds which um, a lot of people say isn't enough but um, I had really good luck on a sheep mule deer white tail um, and hopefully this year I'm gonna have really good luck on a moose at probably sub 60 if I had to guess so um, yeah let's do a quick close-up and we'll close this out all right, here's my redone, new limbs, new quiver. We're gonna try out. I think it looks pretty sharp. Same uh, stabilizers. I'm gonna use the kickstand the same. I tried the the uh, new one, but I didn't like it. Same sight, new quiver, new limbs. I think that looks really good. <laughs> 